Gang violence has become commonplace in news headlines recently. Residents of Westbury in Johannesburg say they're living in fear for their lives following more gang-related violence in the area. In the latest incident, a 43-year-old man was shot and killed in Newlands. His 13-year-old daughter was also shot in the leg. Late last month, four people were also shot and killed in an alleged gang-related attack in the same area. Meanwhile, frustrated residents from Eldorado Park have blamed the justice system for continuing gang violence in the area. Mbogeli, namkanje sibuza ukuthi yini engenziwa ukuqeda ukuzonzobala kwamagenge obgebengu. What needs to be done to fight this gang phenomenon? Whose responsibility is it? Le eminye eminye yembuzo sobe siyidingida namhlanje ohlelweni asikhulume let's talk nolungu ngaphambili sikubekelele mbogeli sikwamkele ohlelweni namhlanje igama lami ngenge ubongiwe uma khumalo wakwazwane. Kanti sikukhumbuze ke mbukele ukuthi ningaba ingxenye loluhlelo ngokushayela ucingo sizwe umbono noma umbuzo wakho inombolo zethu zocingo u0117140677 noma 0117140678 ungabuye futhi usithole kumakhasi ethu okuxhumana ku Twitter at SABC izindaba kanye naku Facebook SABC izindaba ukuze kubelula ke mbukele sicela uqale ngo hashtag asikhulume hashtag SABC news bese kubala umbuzo noma umbono wakho Mbukele inkinga yokulon kubala kwa makengo kebe ngi kwele ini nzi mafrika yonke. Kutiwa izi nganez ni mnyage ishu mizi joina makengo kebe ngu. Ezi nge zao zisuge zipokriwe. Agesizwe mbono yenu kale inkinga. Our area is in a very bad situation due to drugs and gangsterism. What I'm asking from the government is we need police visibility during the day, during the night. Because at night you can't do it, especially when it's low shedding, when the area is dark. We in danger. You can't work at night. It doesn't matter what age you in danger. But in our communities, man, gangsterism. Thank you. Yes, then that. In our school, in our church, in our community, we have it. In our men's, in our society, for God, it all is good. You understand? And where God is, everything is good. Do you understand? So they took God out of the school, out of a community, out of our children. That's why the children can easily just disrespect the parent. I think. He... Melissa community safety and then it's a good thing that it's a CPF because most of the most of the time I'm a CPF I know Baba Amba Baba Fanala to go to my family the police station say by a poor maga load then so go by a crash between the CPF and the gangster but Monga Banyi Swana between the SAPS in the community now the Tinama school of transporter even the community and parents you know what I'm talking about I get all right you must report him with I now I'm done I'm okay can't start one two three in season before back season I'm going to be starting because that's starting that's a seven since I'm told I is it is the wrong as can get a sim card yes in into the in Lula or color it can be a salim more could you sing and talk for the over fund this um tape then when it comes to school obvious I'm not gonna most of the time but some of the things I'm a person and then they want to learn they have to involve I'm a police in terms of food they have to teach kids to not go Leo mbugeli ibegu imbono ya babugeli sponge njenge mbono ye nukdingita kabanzi nga loka samgele ihambeli zetu mnumzane welcome vet boy no wae inga inyama kenge wopkebengu mnumzane lukas matakane owe ntangano e imele i world changes candidates kanyenu Elizabeth Zondo opuma a center for the study of violence and reconciliation. Let me thank you all for your time and let me just start with you welcome. Why are we seeing younger and younger people getting into gangs? I think, um, like, like we had this conversation this morning, me and Mr. Lucas, we talked about the fact that young people do not have opportunities. You know, we know that our stats currently right now shows us 69% of youth unemployment. So young people literally finish school and they go home and they wait for opportunities and these opportunities do not come. And gang bosses are standing on the corners recruiting. And young people sometimes feel like, you know what, instead of just sitting at home and not doing anything, let me join a gang so that I can provide for my family, so that I can also provide for myself. I'm going to come back to your personal story in just a moment, but let me come to you, um, Lucas. One of the things that we're seeing is kids are getting younger and younger. Some of them are 10 years old. And I wonder, because you work with communities, what is the cause of this? Um, thank you, uh, Bonwe. Thanks for having us. 
You know, um, um, this thing, it's that uh, in the families, it's a societal issue. And uh, it only grows up when it goes to school. If you look at those kids at 10, um, well, they're at primary, we identify them as it's a bullying. We call it bullying. And then when, only when they go to the high school, then it becomes a gang and they, they grow into that. But it is something that is really starting in the society. Um, our society is broken. And when you go consulting with these kids, you just tend to realize how broken of a society it is. And then he is right that um, there are no opportunities for young people and they actually get attracted into that. And um, one of the things I always say is that the laws of our countries are also not helping. Elizabeth, for you as a center, you're studying what is happening in the communities. What are you seeing? So, I mean, uh, like Ubaba Esho, like, you know, you, you get projects, you get to, to do community dialogues, you go to the communities and to the schools. And I think one of the projects that we had uh, last year, we went in, in Visham and you see, you know, mm -hmm. just to get a sense of what's happening, why are we seeing so, why are we seeing so much violence, right? And you get there, you, you, hear that, you know what, listen to scholars, you know, children are exposed to so much violence, you know, also from e trauma and you know, from childhood, we are, we are seeing a lot of things like that coming out and, yeah, and then, you know, you know, it's, it's bullying, it's a, there's substance abuse, but it's all those things that, you know, kids are exposed to, you know, there's, those that are experiencing from their homes and, and, and the communities. Mm. Welcome, why did you join again? I think for me, um, like Elizabeth is also saying, it's like, you know, it, it's kind of like this thing of bullying. Um, and, and sometimes, mm. and, 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 what was the story about? And then you find out that I come to and lean on my life, or can you tell by the you wrong? So it's that situation of we have fatherless households. Um, I, I grew up in, in a space where I didn't have a present father. He was available, but he was not present. Um, most of the time, and in an shalam. So he never believed about he needs to take care of me, he needs to provide. So therefore, uku spend wake wasn't always on the tables. Mm. So um, and and boys want um to also be present. Also be born is be isok is lalok anjani. How do you interact with o o o o abafazi? How do you? So for me, I felt like that was lacking. And these gangs, they were those people for me, you know. And seeing these men and these boys uh, accepting me for who I am, especially where I was coming from, that made me feel like. You know what? In mm. the and I think um, I joined the gangs because I wanted a sense of belonging, and I wanted to belong somewhere, and I wanted to matter. And uh, Elizabeth, listening to this, um, this is not a unique story. Um, we're seeing it whether fathers are present, and when they are present, sometimes they, there's there's problems. Sometimes you find there might be violence in the homes. Other homes are functioning properly, mm -hmm. but others you find, like he says, a father only believes that his job is to provide and not to interact with the child. How then, um, how big of a problem is this as you are discovering, speaking to people and young people across the country? I think, um, you know, Kulela um, in such an environment where you, you know, yes, the parent is there, but they're not uh, uh, present, they're not in so much involved, you know, you get to a point where, you know, ubanale so sting or so guti, you know, and ubaba or present, you know, and I think it also brings us to, to the fact that um, also as Njoma like, uh, what can, how can I say this? Not as abazal, right? Like job and you should have lali in dima here to as parents, mm. right? Mm. And singa kuluma even with just simple thing as discipline. Right, and in in most of our families, it's it's, it's a very harsh and violent violent ways, right? And what does that do to a child if it, you are harsh? It, it with a does child? a lot because, like I said, I think we are also contributing and promoting the cycle of violence. Because I mean, you are exposing this child to this violence, and you are also violating this child in a way. So you know, this is the way. This is this is normal, right? Hence, you'd see that okay, as they also grow up, you know, 
when we look at something you said earlier on and it's not a new thing we even heard it from some of our viewers Uguti, some of the the, the the laws and 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 some of the you know the alleged gang um leaders are working with some of the officers and this is an allegation that we often hear from different communities is that what you are finding as well on the ground how prevalent is that yes and i'm glad you actually coming back to linking that with the law and you know um gang violence is one of the social ills in this country like or the crime and other issues as well and then where we linking it with the law is that you would find that um let me just make a, a typical example we consulted with um, a family headed by a single lady uh, with one single daughter, um, just one daughter who's like about 14. And that lady discovered that the child is taking Dacha. And, and she was so devastated when we got into that, so trying to intervene. And this little girl tells her mother, because her mother threatens to say, I'll call uh, the police about this whole thing. And then the girl tells the mother, uh, Mommy, before you even think about that, do you know what the law says about Dacha? So then it's like case closed. So um, what I'm trying to say is at the end of all these, um, drugs are actually the main driver of all the social ills. I want us to talk about the influence of drugs in this and uh, from your experience as well. Um, you know, welcome to see if this is indeed the case. But we'll do that just after the break. Mbugel, see you on the next one. Ngomkatu <laughs> Uyongama Uti, people are lacking employment opportunities and low quality of life. Mbogele gas kubege ne hambeli zetu, uguzi sizwe gatlu guti ganti kwenza gala ne dagami izwa uguti zilala ipindima gulu nginga yama genge. I'm going to come to you, welcome. How big of a problem is this issue, ye dagami izwa, these drugs that we often hear about? I think it, it, it has always been an issue. I mean, we have more rehabilitation, drug rehabilitation centers in South Africa than, than hospitals, um, if, I, if I may say that. And as same with schools. We have less schools, but more drug rehabilitation centers. So drugs do play a pivotal role. Um, and they do, and they are, in many cases, uh, a gateway into various criminal activities. We have many guys that, when they're arrested, you always ask them, why did they do what they did? And they will always say, I, I was high. You know, so, so drugs do play a pivotal role in that situation. And, and yeah, as, as Lucas said, the law does actually make it a bit difficult to, to ascertain um, if a young person is smoking dacha, um, it's legal, so therefore they do it and therefore they have that permission. Did you have moments when you were in the gang, when you were high, and you did things you regret? I think for me it's always been a situation of being, um, I'm, I, I have never been a user myself. But the guys that I used to operate with, they were always high. Um, you, you get sent into a house to do a stupid housebreaking. Um, pardon for saying stupid because the person loses things. But you go in there and, you, and it's a simple job. Just go in there, take the TV, take the, 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 the mobile devices. And then some of the men are so high that it actually changes because now there's a female at the house, there's a cleaner at the house. And then instead of it being a normal robbery, it becomes a rape. And the only reason why it turns into a rape is because this guy is so high that he kind of like changes the plan. So uh, drugs do have a, a, a very, uh, you know, different impact um, on crimes that are being committed because with the influence of, of, of drugs, especially within a crime, it, it escalates, it, it makes the crime more violent. Mm. Um, in, instead of it just having been a normal smash and grab, it becomes the person literally shooting 
uh, the lady or the guy for the for the bag, you know, mm. because of, of 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 the of the influence of of you know drugs. Lucas, you're nodding. Yes, I mean he's just spot on. Um, you know, when when we start rehabilitating a pe rehabilitating a person, we go deep into how we're going to assist, and you find that the that exactly what he's talking about is what happens. Um, it, it, hence, I'm saying. Drugs are the main generator of uh, crime, violence, and all sort of things. I mean, the, the, the gangs that are now starting at schools, it's, it's kind of very scary. Mm -hmm. Because, um, like as I was telling you about the story of a, a, a young girl, it started with when she's with her friends there. Um, the gangsterism now, it's, it's actually joined by girls, uh, mainly at, at, at the high schools. You've got like girls, the girls that have their own clubs. And it's escalating, it's growing. They're gonna come to a point. Hence I'm saying it started at a primary and when we call it bullying, then it escalated at the high school. Now they actually just, uh, uh, you, everyone knows about Amabuto now at the schools. And then that's like gangsters at schools. And, and, and I'll tell you that uh, the teachers are scared, uh, the school governing bodies are scared, and the communities are scared of these kids. Uh, and, uh, you know, it's, it should be very sad if I also bring in this one up that uh, the politicization of kids also at the high schools into your courses, into this, all this, they all bringing in uh, uh, gangsterism because of now it's mixed with drugs. Under normal circumstances before that, the courses and all that was just like an activity as a politics and whatever. But now when they are high, it turns into something else. Hence, I'm saying the laws are actually like, the main drivers of this whole thing as well. Sure. Elizabeth, listening to this, you know, you think about someone who's high, couple that with an access to a dangerous weapon because we're seeing firearms are all over the streets. These are illegal guns mm. that are littering our streets and it doesn't look like, um, you know, as much as things are being done in that regard, they, we are not seeing guns in our streets. Mm. They are there. And these gangs, they're high and the teachers are afraid. What then happens? Um, you know, when it comes to being able to teach, being able to parent? I think, you know, it, it puts uh, um, the life of the teachers, of the principals also at risk. Mm. But again, I feel it, mm. it is also their responsibility. I mean, in Ghana, right? there should be ways, solutions to this. If it's a matter of, 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 of strengthening the policies at school, you know, what 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 are the policies that are there? Are we able to follow them? You know, since again, Jana Slangan in as a community, not just the schools, not just teachers, but also the school governing bodies of the also the communities, right? Let's come together. Let's address these issues. I suppose Sibuya look it takes a village to raise a child. It does. It does. And one of the big things, though, is that I want us to very briefly talk about the psychology of it all, mm. because there's a lot that happens with the child physically. But also psychologically, a lot is happening if they're part of a gang. True. It causes, you know, it's not just physical, like you're saying, it's not just physical uh, um, 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 suffering. It's also mental, to say, with also victims or, you know, because if this is also happening in a school environment, also those who are not part of the gangs or whatever, you know, they, they get victimized and... Mm -hmm. Chances are they'll, they'll also suffer from mental problems or sure. mental health, you know, uh, uh, issues such as net depression, anxiety, all these sorts of things, right? Because it's, it's not just physical, also mental. It affects also how now they think, you know, also with anxiety, you know, when you're in that constant fear of, okay, what's going to happen next? You know, so it, it does a lot to, to, to children. And I want us after the break to look at Iso Bululu. What are some of the solutions um, that we think can be implemented right now? for us to see less and less of what we're seeing, particularly coming out of our schools. I mean, I was very disturbed to hear that kids as young as 10 are now finding themselves into gangs. Mugel, I guess it's a shalala, eight dollars. Yeah, we are coming What steps can be taken in the immediate future to ensure that more, most, and in fact, more lives are not lost to the scourge of gang-related violence? Welcome. I'm going to start with you. In the immediate, for us to just see less of what we're seeing. 
So I, I like what Elizabeth was saying about the fact that Yabona Abandwana they want to belong somewhere. And as Ba as Sichonai that you know you get these little groups um, at school that form. And um, some of these groups tend to be positive and then later on they turn to be negative based on the influence, um, especially with regards to bullying. And if kids are being bullied, I mean when I joined the gangs, it was predominantly because I was teased all the time. And I was at a school, I wore a blazer. And they used to make fun of me for wearing that blazer. So it wasn't really, education wasn't really seen as an important tool in my own community. So I feel one of the solutions that we need to look at is we need to bring back certain things to our communities, like come and play. It was such a beautiful process where kids could just be allowed to play. Kids are not allowed to, be, to play anymore. There's, uh, all of our kids, when you want your child, even your daughter, your son, they're on their phones. Mm -hmm. uh, they're being raised by TikTok. They're being raised by Facebook. Um, and there's such a lot of violence on these social medias that these kids are kind of like so saturated through this that if they see a boy or girl at, at school being shot or stabbed, it doesn't even phase them because they've seen it all before. So I think parents play a pivotal role in making sure that it phones abandoned sometimes. engage mm. um, I, I once visited a family. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm the director of a foundation called Bright Spark. And as we visited this family and they were having supper, literally all three kids were on their phones while eating. And the mother and father were also on their phones while eating. So we, we are a cell phone generation that becomes so saturated and saying that there's no such thing as family anymore. Yeah. Yeah. So I feel like that's one of the things that we need to bring back. Um, and an another thing that I also feel would be a very beautiful solution is to get men to talk, to get men around the table and say, get back to your homes, get back into the position of authority as fathers, yeah. you know. Elizabeth, for you? I think for me it would be um, increasing uh, um, access to, mm. to psychosocial services, yeah. you know, with interventions that are focusing on... on, on, on addressing issues of violence, you know, um, also providing, you know, support to, to also victims, you know, the families of, of, of these kids, the families of these also gangsters, because I also feel some point they're also affected, right? So for me, I think it's that, and to also go back to the point of also families, I think we can even start in our own families. So like I said earlier, I spoke about also as parents, how we also discipline in Ghana, is it, you know, we can try ways in which we are less harsh and, and violent. And I think we can also do with the support of, of, of both government and NGOs that are already doing work around uh, uh, um, um, issues of, of, of social ills, right? To say, let's also try and, and, and increase access to parental skills. I think in that way, you know, they, they, they can be changed. And, uh, you know, this, this, this social media is a huge aspect in the phones um, that both of you are raising. And I wonder, Lucas, um, you know, in this Nyan's a manj to make sure that we don't see um, violence, we don't see in Ghana to getting into things that we, you know, we know nothing about and, and some of the things that we used to think are an anomaly, but man, just as Bonabantana Betunja, they're getting involved into so many things. And I'm glad because as, as our organization, World Changers Candidate, we have a solution and our solution has proved to be working. And it's working because our approach is not to modify behavior, but to change the heart. When you talk to the kids, I mean, they're normally human beings. I mean, I would just give you, why am I saying that to support my statement? Why am I saying this is working? Because uh, when we were called by Leondale Secondary School to come and do the intervention of the, after um, the whole school throw a Dhaka party at the school, as I'm talking to you now, um, the kids there, because we actually interacting with them one by one, and then we have ambassadors within the school, and as we speak, or just on, um, on, on a Friday, we were awarding them for their participation into this. And I would like you to show, show you this, their participation in reducing the drugs at school. Mm -hmm. You know, um, when you talk to them and they, are, they talk to their peers, it becomes the same uh, conversation within themselves. And the ones that have become well changed as candidate ambassadors, which have changed their heart. So the ones that haven't turned around as yet, they wouldn't smoke when they see them. They know the conversation. We have uh, intervention programs after schools whereby these kids, they now they engage. They've got asked, um, a program, our program that we have extended after, after schools. As soon as the, the clock goes in, they know how to go into the class. They talk amongst themselves and they busy slowly but surely ch changing the world one soul at a time. And that is the solution like now. Let's not focus on changing 
uh, uh, on modifying the behavior of a human being. Yeah. Let's focus on changing the heart. And, and you know, I got to say this. You will need to invite God into our lives, into our families. Um, you know, on the 1st of September, we took one of our first world changer candidate, Kabala Mabalani, to uh, talk to the guys in rehab. He said to them, there's one thing that we lost as a country. We used to say, Hosa, Moya, Hosa, into our country. And after we attain our freedom, we, we, we threw the Holy Spirit out. And we need that. So let's focus on changing the heart not modifying the behavior. Right, and it does sound like it all goes back to the home. It all goes back to what we are doing in our homes because that also reflects what we are doing in society. Let me thank you all. And hopefully the young people who watch this particular show are going to understand there's nothing wrong if you're not part of a gang. There's nothing wrong if you choose to be on the straight and narrow. So let me thank you all for your time. Welcome, Vet Boy. World Changes Candidates. Elizabeth Zondo, Opuma, a center for the study of violence and reconciliation. Bugalas Temuguti in Moko Ia Kubega, Emma Casino to Kumana, Oga Kumalo, Wagwazwane, Ud Nate, Bale Asculum, City, Misalemel.